tuning into Kerika TV. I'm Erica Lasan, and I am super excited about this week's video. Today we're going to be talking about my recent trip to Cuba. It's time to get to the nitty gritty and the business of today's video, which is actually giving you guys a travel guide on how to travel to Cuba, at least before all of the changes that that man Trump has implemented or is going to be implementing. There's going to be a lot of information here. So, uh, to make things a little bit easier for you guys, what I'm going to do is put descriptions of the topics that we're going to be covering in the link below along with timestamps so that you can figure out exactly where you want to stop along the route if there's some specific information that I have to offer that you may actually need or want. Here we go. Let's hop into it. One of the first things that you need to know in planning your trip to Cuba are that you need to prepare in planning to visit Cuba. Um, there are a lot of things that you can't just do like you would if you were going on a regular trip. Nick and I decided that we were going to take this trip on a whim almost, even though it was something that I had wanted to do for a while. I just happened to see some really, really cheap tickets. Nick was on paternity leave and I figured there's no better time than the present, no day like the day. Well, that day. One, you do need to obtain a license. Even though the policy has changed, that still holds valid. You still have to visit the OFAC, which is the Office of Foreign Assets Control, and obtain a license. But before you go to visit the OFAC, you need to know which days you're going to be traveling. You have to know what you're traveling for so that you can list those things in the application. There are 12 different categories that you can choose from education to one-on-one -on -one interaction with the Cuban people. You're not supposed to choose tourism. Tourism is like the one thing that you're not supposed to do while you're in Cuba. Although technically, whether you're there for business or whether you're there for play, you're still a tourist if you're not from there, right? Let's talk tickets. I would really highly recommend getting on the boat now or in this place, a plane and visiting Cuba because with Trump's new policies people will not be able to travel individually they're probably gonna end up doing really um, big travel groups I don't know what's gonna happen as far as the ticket prices going up but I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna try to get in where they can fit in before those things change um, so one of the sites that I use to find really cheap travel tickets is travelpirates.com Mm, mm, mm. I love Travel Pirates. And my other go-to site is secretflying.com. And right now for Cuba, I feel like a lot of the tickets that I usually end up seeing are less, no, I can't say less than $300, but between $250 and maybe four or $500, but I feel like on average you can find a ticket for around $300 to travel to Cuba. And with that, you're able to then book your own accommodations through Airbnb, but we're going to cover more of that later because what I would really recommend doing is finding a casa particular. Reeling it back in. The third thing you need to know about traveling to Cuba is that you have to have the Cuban health insurance. It is mandatory in order for you to enter the country because everybody is covered with health insurance in Cuba. The way that you can attain your health insurance is really simple. I believe that most airlines actually include the price of the or the cost of the health insurance in your ticket. At least that was the case with us. We flew with United before all that craziness happened with the man getting dragged off the plane and stuff. Health insurance was included in the price of the ticket. Our ticket was actually only $250. And um, another thing that was really great was the visa. <laughs> Leading me into the fourth thing. You actually need to have a visa in order to enter Cuba. Now with a lot of countries that people visit, they end up having to go to the embassy to get a visa and it's a really long process. They make it super easy when you're traveling to Cuba, or at least that was my experience, because you can actually purchase the visa in the airport. But the kicker is you can't purchase it in every airport. We ended up taking our flight out of LaGuardia and we had a connecting flight to Texas, but we weren't able to purchase our visa in LaGuardia. We had to wait until we got to Houston before we could purchase our visa at the gate right before we boarded the plane. But it was super easy and not as expensive as you would think. It was actually 75 bucks, which was not the worst thing ever, especially considering the convenience. Let's talk accommodation. Da, da, da. 
Uh, when visiting Cuba, you have a couple options in terms of where you can stay and how you can be accommodated. With Cuba, they have Casa Particulares, which is almost like a homestay, and then they have the hotel option, or if you come on a cruise, I guess you're going to be sleeping on the boat. Depending on your budget, that probably dictates which option you're going to choose, or just maybe depending on your personal travel taste. If you like interacting with people, if you like experiencing the cultures that you are trying to immerse yourself in, Casa Particulares are probably going to be your best option because with that, you get to interact with an actual Cuban local um, and either stay in their house or a house that they own. We happened to get a Casa Particular. Let's just say God was looking out for us and how we came to meet our host. But we had an awesome experience with them. Their names were Marta and Alberto, and they live in Vedado. We rented an apartment from them, an entire apartment that had two bedrooms, a bathroom, kitchen, a balcony, living area. It came fully furnished and everything. Um, and it was about 40 CUCs a night that when we stayed there because there was only two of us. If you're going with a bigger group, the price is going to be different. The prices for the Casa Particulares vary depending on the location that you're staying in because in Old Havana is probably going to be a little more expensive than if you were a little further outside of the city just based on demand and things like that. We stayed in Medallo, we could jog into Central Havana and on a bus it took like 15 minutes maybe to get to Old Havana so it wasn't bad at all. They were amazing. They cooked dinner for us and breakfast, homemade, delicious. They were really really great conversationalists. I really feel as though those are the things that made our trip so special and I'm so happy that we stayed with them. I can't recommend them highly enough. If you're interested in connecting with them, please send me a message. Instagram is probably the best bet. Um, and I can totally send you their information that you can connect with them on your visit. Now, let's talk money. Money, 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 money. If there's anything that you should take away from this video, it's probably about the money. One thing that you definitely have to do in preparation for your trip to Cuba, especially if you're leaving from the States, is make sure you have your money ready. And I don't mean the money to travel there, I mean the money for when you are there. Because if you're coming from the United States, there is a 20% tax on all US dollars. In order to avoid this tax and make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck, what you want to do is convert your currency before you leave to go to Cuba. You want to take either euros, you want to take Canadian dollars, you basically want to take anything that isn't the American dollar down there because you're not going to get as much value for your money. As far as converting to the Cuban dollar, that's something that you can't do until you actually enter Cuba itself. And there are a couple of ways that you can convert your money. What I would recommend doing is as soon as you get off the plane, make sure you go and convert your money before you even leave the airport. That is the best way to make sure that you have all the money that you need for the trip because they don't accept US credit cards anywhere in Cuba, uh, not even the ATMs, and if you don't have money, you're not gonna be able to do anything. And that makes for a really sad trip. One of the biggest and probably most confusing things about visiting Cuba, the currency. In Cuba, there are two different currencies. You have the coup, C-U-P, and you have the CUC, C-U-C. The CUC is the Cuban national currency for Cuban locals. The CUC, which is solely intended for tourists. There is 24 coups to one CUC. So you want to make sure that when you're converting your money from the euro or the dollar or whatever currency you decided to bring down with you, you want to make sure that you're getting back the correct currency. There are a couple of ways to tell the difference between the two currencies. The way that I was told to tell the difference was to look on the bills to see if there were monuments or faces. The CUC has monuments. The CUP, which is the local Cuban currency, has faces on it. Faces of their leaders, presidents, I don't know who those people are. If you get back a dollar bill or any bill with a face on it, that means that you received Cuban pesos. I don't think that the people are really, um, I don't want to say malicious like that or thieving, but at the same time you can never be too careful because if you're on a budget while you're traveling, you want to make sure that you are able to stick to your budget based on the money that you took. 
just not just because you weren't properly informed. Because there are two different currencies, there you have to pay attention to how you actually use it. Basically, if you are not from Cuba, you are not supposed to be using the CUP. If you speak Spanish, you may be able to get away with it. If you are able to get away with it, then that can help make your trip a whole lot less expensive. You may get some stares or somebody may roll their eyes or whatever the situation is if you use it um, because it's almost like you're kind of taking advantage of the system. Full disclosure, while on our trip, my husband and I did convert some Cuban CUCs to CUPs. But it was only for transportation because we ended up taking the bus around a lot versus taking a taxi everywhere. And that was solely for our cultural benefit, but it also happened to benefit our wallets as well. So we only converted five CUCs and we were able to travel back and forth between Vidado and Old Havana, some parts of Central Havana, as well as going all the way out to the beach, which was Playa del Este, and that was about an hour or so away, for less than five CUCs, because the bus ride was five cents. I mean, moving right along, let's talk Wi-Fi. So because Cuba is still developing a lot, there is Wi-Fi in the country, but not everywhere has it. Depending on where you stay, if you're in a hotel, more than likely you will have it in the hotel. If you're in a casa particular, depending on who your host is, you may or may not have it. But if you want general public access Wi-Fi, that is available to you, but you gotta get a Wi-Fi card. Wi-Fi cards are pretty hard to find if you don't know where to look. We didn't have one for about a day and a half when we got there because we didn't know that the best way to get a Wi-Fi card to ensure that you have one as soon as you get there is to get it from the airport. I believe I remember someone saying that it was seven CUCs for five hours of Wi-Fi, which if you can find it, do it. Anywhere else that you would more than likely be able to come across them on the street is going to be about three CUCs for one hour. In order to access the free public Wi-Fi, you have to go to the Wi-Fi parks. Every time you're walking down the street, if you see a whole lot of people sitting around any type of greenery on their phones, on their tablets, on their computers, odds are it's a Wi-Fi park. If you've been looking for one, make sure you stop there. Usually the only people that are just standing in the park but not using their phones or the Wi-Fi are the people that are selling the Wi-Fi cards. The only thing is though, once you start to use the card, it expires, I believe, in a month or so. So you don't wanna like stock up on cards if you're not gonna be on the internet that much. Well guys, that concludes this episode of Querrica TV and your travel guide to Cuba. We hope that you found it really informative. I know that it was a little long, but I feel as though these are all things that I would have loved to know exactly before planning or leaving for Cuba and things that I also felt were really interesting and important points to share with people who may be considering visiting as well. If you are planning, I hope that you found it super informative and it helps make your trip a more budget friendly, fun, and uh, live rich time and for those of you who are considering going to Cuba I hope that it inspires you to just book your ticket do it you'll have so much fun especially before Trump's changes take place because Lord knows what's gonna happen once that happens you probably won't get as authentic of an experience and we all know that that's the best type of experience to have if you're gonna be traveling until the next time guys if you like this video please make sure you subscribe give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to know more about the things that happened while on our trip check out our travel vlog from our Cuba travels right here I'm live rich and happy dream chasing bye I felt the most comfortable in Cuba than I have in a lot of countries that I visited the only time that I can say that I actually felt some type of racial inequality or some type of like racial funny business was actually when I went to the hotels that were in the really popular touristy area of Old Havana. A lot of the people that were working the manual jobs, like people that were working in the bathroom or that were doing janitorial work, um, they were darker people and the people who were up at the front desk and people that were interacting with the actual customers, those happened to be the lighter Cubans.
Thank mm-hmm. you.